Come on in, ghouls. Welcome to Dieded Out, where we talk all things Survivor. My name is Luke, and today we're talking about the times that Survivor took direct inspiration from our favorite seasonal genre, horror movies. Finally, a video for the intersection of diehard Survivor fans and diehard horror movie fans. There are dozens of us. Dozens. From pet cemeteries to a boy named Boo, Survivor's always had a bit of a spooky streak in it. Even still, Survivor's directly referenced or taken inspiration from the wide world of horror several times, sort of. I mean, some of these might be a bigger stretch than Joga on the beach, but uh, come on, it's Halloween. Just go with it. So gather around the campfire, open your pumpkin flavored drink of choice, and let's count down five times Survivor took inspiration from our favorite horror movies. At number five is the entire season of Survivor Ghost Island, from the set decoration to the logo, all the way down to the tribal colors. Ghost Island, uh, sounds pretty frightening. I wish we were going to Candy Apple Island instead. It's still full of ghosts, but they're not quite so scary. I gotta say, points on the name. Ghost Island is incredibly evocative, even if it is just Exile Island with benefits, full of infamously misplayed idols and advantages of prior seasons. Eric's immunity necklace, for example, or James's unplayed idols, or Debbie's unplayed Cochrane. It's all here. So then, yeah, the ghosts of Ghost Island were the metaphorical ghosts of mistakes of seasons past, and not actual ghosts. Although it would have been appreciated if, like, when you get Andrea's unplayed immunity idol, she comes out in a bedsheet with eye holes and hands it to you. Like, that would have been a nice touch, but we can't have everything. Still, for all of Ghost Island's problems, the theme at least feels focused and fully realized. The macabre set decoration doing some heavy lifting to sell the season and theme. Creepy skulls show up in like every other challenge, for example, and tribal councils never been spookier. I mean, this is a top five tribal council set, hands down. And look at the creepy little bone torch snuffer. Ghost Island's not terribly well regarded as a season, but they really nail the aesthetic, and it's the kind of season that just makes me so glad Survivor's still on. Like, this show's been on so long that they really themed an entire season of this Desert Island survival show around creepy horror movie iconography, and it kinda worked. I mean, Ghost Island was such a successful theme that Laurel was paralyzed with fear to make a move against Dom and Wendell. At number four is all of the advertising for Survivor 41, which focused on a monster consuming the castaways for some reason. Survivor advertising's always been, um, interesting to be generous, but 41 truly was next level in their approach. This island ain't big enough for the both of us. I'm gonna need a bigger torch. As I'm sure you're well aware, Survivor 41 was the first season back after 18 months, the longest the show had ever been off the air. So, how do you advertise that? You could focus on the fact that these people have been waiting a year and a half to play, they're gonna make some big moves. Or focus on Prisoner Dilemma Island, a brand new location where high stakes decisions are made. Maybe you don't gild the lily at all and just say, hey, Survivor's back. Good old dependable Survivor. You know you're gonna watch. Watch it. But Survivor 41's advertising went a different way. They instead chose to focus on the shorter season length, faster pace, and heightened danger, all through the lens of some half-baked monster metaphor. To quote Jeff Probst, Survivor 41 is like the monster in a horror movie, and if you're a player, it's coming for you. So either you devour the monster, or the monster will devour you. What the fuck does that mean? You just picked something out of a hat and said X is like Y. Watch, I can do it too. Survivor is like the love interest in a romantic comedy. If you're a player, you've got to make the right moves to win her over and win the game. Either you find love or you go home. 
to be fair, the metaphorical monster in this case is, I guess, the reduced food supply and lack of flint for losing tribes, but I still find it bizarre that they chose to frame this in the context of a monster movie where you devour the monster or the monster devours you. I mean, I don't recall the residents of Haddonfield eating Michael Myers at the end of Halloween. Well, maybe in the later sequels, they did get kinda weird. At number three is Shambo's dream in Survivor Samoa, a literal Lynchian nightmare. Down the stretch of Samoa, Shambo starts to lose it a little bit. She begins talking to the chickens, honestly her only real friends on the island, imploring them to lay eggs lest they be eaten by the rest of the tribe. And I guess they didn't lay any eggs. <laughs> Shambo appoints herself head chef and decides to turn the chickens into chicken soup against everyone else's wishes. They were all kind of hoping to roast the chicken. She's already pretty upset because she's cooking her old friends, then is further agitated when Dave Ball comes strolling out of the woods and questions her again, asking her why she's going to hard boil chicken for two hours. Kinda seems like it's going to ruin the chicken. Damn. That night, Shambo has a dream, which she believes is a vision from God, of her tribe voting Dave Ball off, and the show actually depicts Shambo's nightmare on screen. It is truly one of the strangest sequences in Survivor history, depicted in black and white with jump cuts, shaky cam, and speed ramps galore. It's a sequence that I have to imagine was at least partially inspired by the esoteric, nightmarish dreamscapes of David Lynch movies. Now this isn't exactly Mulholland Drive, but it does the trick. The late teens and early 20s were a time in Survivor history where they really had fun in editing, from Coach's exile trip to Burgers elapsed to this very dream. If this exact same scenario took place 10 seasons earlier, or 10 seasons later for that matter, I can guarantee they wouldn't actually show the dream on screen, no matter how impactful it was on the season. But this bizarre, game-impacting dream came just at the right moment in Survivor history for us to actually get to see it. Anyway, Shambo sets about making her vision from God a reality and begins rallying to vote off Dave Ball. And uh, anyone else find it strange how premonitions from God always seem to align with exactly what you personally want and believe? Weird how that works. Unfortunately for Shambo, John's actually voted out this round, blindsiding her and presumably God. At number two is Matt's constant machete sharpening in Survivor Amazon, inspired by Friday the 13th. Matt adopted a fun little hobby around the midpoint of Amazon. He'd just sit around all day, sharpening the machete, to the reasonable alarm of all his tribe mates. I gotta say, scaring your tribe mates so much that they're afraid to vote you off out of fear that you'll kill them has got to be one of my favorite obsolete Survivor strategies ever. Matt is creepy. It's creepy. It's creepy. It's all he did. Sit around and sharpen the machete. Well, maybe I'm being unfair. Matt has other hobbies. He also likes menacingly staring off into the distance and enjoys eating live grubs to an uncomfortable degree. It all paints a portrait of a man slowly coming unhinged in the elements. Machetes, creepy head tilts, remind you of anyone? How about a little musical accompaniment to drive the point home? I promise I won't uh, harm anyone. I'm gonna pass this, guys. Yeah, that's some very Friday the 13th music. Like, very. We get the message, Survivor. Matt is a killer, confirmed. Fittingly, the Matt is a serial killer storyline also concludes the way any good slasher movie does, with the final girl ultimately slaying the killer in the end. Survivor's best and most iconic horror inspiration comes from a challenge inspired by the Blair Witch Project in Survivor Borneo. The Blair Witch Project was a major cultural phenomenon when it came out in 1999, and yeah, Gen Z, it is scary, okay? It spawned 20 years and counting of found footage imitators hoping to be the next big, low-budget found footage hit. 
Spoiler alert, they weren't. Well, except for one, maybe you've heard of it. A little thing called the Survivor Witch Project. In episode 12 of Survivor Borneo, shot almost a full year after the Blair Witch Project was released in theaters, we get a challenge directly inspired by that very movie. Like, directly. During this challenge, Jeff tells a ghost story to the final five players. Now pay attention, Rudy, this will be important. Within this spooky story, they learn the answers to questions they'll be asked later in the challenge. Rudy, I said pay attention. The challenge is to run into the jungle to several different posts and correctly answer a question about the spooky story Jeff just told. But you must answer the question directly into the lens of a handheld camera pointed at your face, Blair Witch style. I mean, culture moved a bit slower back then, but this would have been an outdated reference already by the time this season aired. It would be like if Survivor 41 had a Tiger King challenge you kind of missed the window of opportunity. Still, this close to a million bucks, no one's gonna not give this challenge their all, no matter how silly it is. Well, except for Rudy. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's utterly bizarre. No other challenge has directly referenced a cultural artifact so strongly since, especially one that's not even being promoted on the show. Survivor and the Blair Witch Project don't really have a lot of connective tissue, other than that they involve people sleeping outside, I guess. Still, the horror fan in me absolutely loves this challenge, and you can consider this my petition to make the Survivor Witch Project a new Halloween night staple. Move over, Hocus Pocus. Also, Hocus Pocus sucks. Got nothing else for ya. Have a safe and happy Halloween, everyone. Like and subscribe, and I'll get you more Survivor content just like this. Until next time, don't get idled out.